ඇත වශයෙන්ම මේ ආණ්ඩුව තුල තියෙන ව්‍යාකූල තත්ත්වය සමහරක් වෙලාවට මේ අහගෙන ඉන්න කතාවල වලින්ම පිළිබිඹු වෙනවා කියලා මට හිතුණා මෙතන මේ කතාවලට අහගෙන ඉන්නකොට බුදු දහම වෙනුවෙන් පෙනින්න අය මම හිතන්නේ වැදගත් ඉස්සෙල්ලාම අදුම තරමේ මූලික බුද්ධ බුදු බුද්ධ දර්ශනයේ තියෙන පස් පව් ටික නොකරේ එතකොට ඒකවත් ආරක්ෂා කරගන්න බැරි ඒකවත් ආරක්ෂා කරන්න බැරි අය ඒකේ මූලික හර ධර්මයවත් ගැන තැකීමක් නැති අය බුද්ධ බුදු බුද්ධ ධර්මය වෙනුවෙන් පෙනී ඉන්නකොට ඇත්තටම ඒක විහිළු සහගතයි එතකොට අවිහිංසාවාදය ගැන කතා කරන අතර උලති යන්න කියලාත් යෝජනා කරනකොට එහෙම නැත්නම් ප්‍රජාතන්ත්‍රවාදී අයිතියක් වෙනුවෙන් උද්ඝෝෂණය කරන අයට ත්‍රස්තවාදීන් ලෙස සලකන්න කියලා යෝජනා කරන්නත් පුළුවන් නම් මොකද්ද මේ දර්ශනය මොකද්ද මේ ප්‍රතිපත්තිය කියන එක ගැන ප්‍රශ්න එනවා ගරු සභාපතිතුමනි ජූනි අට වෙනිදා විරෝධතාවයක් තියන්නේ ඒක බය වෙන්න ඕනේ නැහැ ජාතික ජන බලවේගයෙන් තමයි ඒ ඒක සංවිධානය කරන්නේ නමුත් ඒ විරෝධතාවය ගැන අදහස් දක්වනකොට මේ පාර්ලිමේන්තුව තුළම ජ්‍යේෂ්ඨ මැති ඇමති ඇමතිවරේ හිටපු ඇමතිවරේ කියනකොට පොලීසියට ඒගොල්ලෝ ත්‍රස්තවාදීන් ලෙස සලකන්න කියලා මම හිතන්නේ එක බරපතලයි ඒක බරපතලයි මොකෝ මේ වෙච්ච නැති කරුණා කළ සභාපතිතුමා මගේ කාලෙන් නම් අඩු කරන්න එපා ඔව් මන් තුමා මගේ කතාව සම්බන්ධයෙන් කතා කරේ පුලිම පන්සිල් පද පහ බොහොම හොඳයි පන්සිල් පද පහේ පළවෙනි පදය අපේ අතුකෝරල මන්ත්‍රීතුමාවම මරා දැමීම ගැන මම හිතන්නේ පළවෙනි පදයම කඩලා තියෙනවා ඒ කතා කරන පක්ෂය තුළ ඊට පස්සේ දෙවෙනි කාරණය ගැන කතා කරොත් එහෙම මම කිව්වේ අරගල කරන යම් උද්ඝෝෂණ කරන කිසි කෙනෙකුට ඕන හැටි උදුසක කරන්න පුළුවන් ඒක ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ ත්‍රස්තවාදී ක්‍රියාවන් කරන නැහැට ත්‍රස්තවාදී ක්‍රියාවන් කරන නැහැට රටේ නීතිය ක්‍රියාත්මක කරන්නවා ඒකයි පැහැදිලිව කියන්නේ उत्साह उत्साह නීති ගේන්න උත්සාහ කරන බව ඊටමත්ම පැහැදිලි. ඉතින් ඒක නෙවෙයි අත වශයෙන්ම මට අද කතා කරන්න ඕන උනේ මේ ආණ්ඩුව විසින් මේ ගොඩනගන මේ 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 ඊටමත්ම භයානක මතවාදයක් දැන් ගොඩනගන්න හදනවා. ඒක ආණ්ඩුව පැත්තෙනුත් ජනාධිපති මේ කරන ප්‍රකාශ වලිනුත් ඒක ඒක හදමින් යන මතවාදයක්. It's a very dangerous narrative. uh uh honorable member it's a very dangerous narrative one is that the uh, government is on the right path to recovery the, uh, the president in his address to the nation talked about four pillars but none of those four pillars uh are are being implemented or are working in reality the four pillars and people's experience of this because there's a huge gap but at the same time the government is also presenting this idea that any resistance any criticism of the uh, of the government's policies is either uh, is destructive anti government and uh, uh, similar to any kind of terrorist activity now this is a very uh, and in it is in this regard that laws are being also proposed various attempts are being made to bring in laws that actually limit the ability of a sit- of the citizens of the media to express themselves uh, to speak according to their conscience 
All of these new laws that are being proposed underlying these new laws is an attempt to suppress the freedom of expression and to suppress people's democratic rights. There's also this attempt to demonize critics. Any criticism of the government, there's an exaggerated, uh, there's an exaggerated reaction to that where the individuals, the very personal attacks are made on people and these the in critiques of the government are demonized. Now all of this is also taking place within a con context where the president is also claiming that elections are unnecessary, that people do not want elections. And who is he saying this to? He's making these remarks when he's addressing the judiciary, when he's addressing uh, the bar, uh, members of the Bar Association, when he's addressing a law conference that he's also saying that elections are unnecessary, that people have uh, people do not want re-election. So what, what, is, what is the underlying message here? That, that, that all of us must forego or, or give up any kind of all our democratic rights in order to support the government's e economic reforms, uh, which are also not having the desired effect. So in other words, what the government is trying to do is setting up this narrative and attempting to bring about laws and also influencing the judiciary in anticipation of the resistance that is go definitely going to emerge as a result of the failure of their economic program. The failure of their economic reforms is inevitable because this government is not on the right track. This government is on the wrong track. And this government continues to ignore uh, the very real problems that people are facing, and it is uh, and it's uh, quite evident that very soon that people are going to be restless, people are going to start objecting to having to bear the burden of these economic reforms when those who are responsible for the economic crisis are uh, getting away scot-free. So this is not what the people expected, this is not what people wanted. And this attempt by, this, by the government, by a government and a president that does not have a mandate for any of these reforms and is, uh, is afraid to seek a mandate for these if, if economic reforms, when such a government starts talking about the, how elections are unnecessary or how people are uh, not ready for elections, or how any kind of criticism of the government is, is, is similar to, a, should be treated as a, as a terrorist activity. This is a very dangerous, uh, dangerous approach that is being uh, constructed. And it is very clear that this narrative is, is being constructed because the government knows that its economic policies are, of, are failing, that it, the, the proposed economic agenda is not going to plan and is in, in fact not going to solve the problems of the people. And it is preparing uh, the ground, it is preparing the background uh, to deal with the inevitable opposition that is going to emerge very soon against this government. Right? So the president has failed to build any kind of political consensus for the reforms. He keeps talking about the fact that the IMF uh, agreement has the support of the parliament but as a support of the government, not of the parliament as a whole. The, uh, the, the, there was certainly, uh, the, it was not, not, a, not, a, not a piece of legislation that obtained the, uh, 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 the consensus of the parliament. And he has failed to build this consensus outside parliament as well. And in fact, it is this failure that he is attempting to, to cover up through these kinds of very un, undemocratic uh, interventions, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, attempt to curtail freedoms, the violations to the Constitution that are being uh, proposed, the violations to people's basic rights that are being proposed. And, and he must, and it, it is necessary, it is important to understand that this is being watched closely. The international community is watching. Sri Please Lankan find up. citizens. Your time is over. Thank you. Sri, Sri Lankan citizens are observing this closely. None of what the president said was accidental or innocent. It was, in fact, very threatening and extremely dangerous 
and uh, a, a very uh, negative, uh, 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 constructing a very anti-democratic narrative in, in uh, face of the failure of this government. Thank you. Reporter Varane Tore Abakshapati Vartakarane.